Hi guys, and welcome to Vegan Booty Talks. I have a guest with me today. She is absolutely incredible. Six-time published fitness model, personal trainer, and mom. She doesn't just have years of personal training experience behind her, but she helps herself to work hard to bounce back after being pregnant with each of her three boys. Those three boys keep her active with sports, beach, hiking, biking, and just being an everyday mom. Sharing her fitness story to inspire others in is her passion and her way to teach others boys to be positive role models and overcome adversity. So welcome to the show, Ashley King. Hi, how are you? Great. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to talk. Of course. Thank you for our finding the time and show up. I'm really excited. But before we're going to, you know, get started with the questions, I get ready for you. I just wanted to tell a little more to our listeners uh, about yourself. So where are you from and what do you do right now for living? So I am originally from California and I lived a little bit in Texas, in Austin, Texas. And now I'm in Southern California, in San Diego. Um, I do have three kids. Um, I have a 13-year-old boy, 11-year-old boy, and an eight-year-old boy. They do keep me busy. Um, I think I'm most well known for uh, being kind of like a motivational kind of influencer or a fitness coach. Um, I have my own fitness app called Ashley King Fitness. Um, I help clients, mostly women, kind of get in shape. Um, but I'm also known for um, my sobriety. I've been sober for 15 years. Um, I got started with my sobriety at 22 years old, and I like to share about it because I know a lot of people kind of go through a lot of uh, addiction issues, and it's um, it's kind of hard to go through. And you don't want to talk about it, but I like to help anyone and everyone I can. Wow, that's incredible. Yes, uh, I am so appreciate you open, you know, and ready to talk about because I'm sure this information is needed and someone is on the other end is maybe going to change life after this. So let's start yeah. from the beginning. How old are you now? And when you are actually started your fitness career, how you get into the fitness? So I am 38 years Years old now and I kind of got started at a young age I'd say I was always active I did competition baton from five years old to 14 years old I did cheerleading um, and dance probably from eighth grade it's about 12 13 all the way to 18 years old and then I started to get into actual weight training which is my wheelhouse now. Um, I've just saw huge results. I was a very skinny kind of girl growing up. I kind of got teased about being really scrawny. Um, so I like the way the weights made me feel. They made me feel strong. They made me feel, um, you know, more, more in control of the way I look because it, you could definitely change your body very quickly with weights. A lot of women are afraid of weight training and I never was. I I just started it and I kind of just learned from other people helping me and obviously educating myself. So through the years, I've gotten better and better at it. And I help other women kind of get their confidence back, um, getting bouncing back from having kids, um, getting their confidence back with their body um, and, and teaching them that, that they shouldn't be afraid of weights. Because to be honest, the biggest results you're ever going to get and the results that you want are in the weights. Um, and it shouldn't be as intimidating as it is. So, and then I started training women after I had my three kids, I started training women, um, through my fitness app and through virtual kind of coaching. And it's been really, really successful, but I would say the biggest pinpoint that really made the biggest difference in my life was when I got sober, I got really into fitness because I needed something healthy to focus on. Um, and it kind of just has kept me sober from there. Um, and it's been the catalyst for me helping other people because I know what fitness does for me in a positive way. I know it can help other people. Wow, that's so interesting. Can I ask you when you actually realize that you have a problem, you know, with uh, alcohol? Um, I had several um, relatives that were close to me that um, dealt with addiction issues. Me being so young, I didn't understand. I was probably 12 or something when I saw that come up in my family. Um, but it was a self-recognition kind of thing. I just realized um, I, through high school, I did not drink. I did not party. I was a really good student. 
Mm -hmm. Um, it was right after high school. I kind of started, um, getting out there and I'm an all or nothing person and that could be a good or a bad thing. And I think that I, two years straight, I just kind of partied too hard. I didn't get into drugs, but I, I, just couldn't handle my alcohol. And I just kind of started realizing, okay, it comes from my genes because there's several people in my family that struggle with it, but I mostly just didn't feel happy. I didn't feel happy anymore. And I wanted to be happy. That was my driving force. I noticed that the people who were closest to me were not happy with me. I wasn't happy with myself. And the one um, dominating factor was the alcohol. And I knew that previous to drinking alcohol and relying on that, I was super happy. I was confident. My life was going in the direction I wanted to. So at a really young age, I just made that decision. I said, you know what? I want to be happy again. Um, I want the people around me to trust me and love me for who I am. And I don't need it. So I just stopped at 22 and I just never looked back. Wow. So from that time, from the age of 22, you never drink again, but like for today, right? Is ever like this, you know, sometimes we got in a situation that we are kind of like feel that we need to drink, you know, like to get social or maybe it's a special event or some, I don't know, special, super expensive wine or invitation to a dinner. So how you handle those situations? I mean, honestly, um, those closest to me know that I don't drink and they know that I certainly don't need it. I am lucky in the fact that I have been a confident person since the day I was born. Um, not to say that I don't struggle with insecurities and awkwardness and social situations, but I feel like I do have an, um, an advantage in that point. I never needed it to be social. I just thought that I needed it to be uh, more fun, or I honestly used it as a coping mechanism. That was my downfall. I used it to deal with stress. I used it to deal with boredom. I mean, most people drink because they have a problem with something they don't want to deal with. Um, so when I'm in social situations, um, I just, I'm so used to like not drinking now. It's almost not even a factor. And I do a lot of self-reflection. Like every year that I like celebrate my sobriety birthday, I just think to myself, look at all that I've done. Look at how happy I am. Look at all the positive things are in my life. I wouldn't have those if I wasn't sober. And if I don't stay sober, um, I would say that my kids are probably my ultimate driving factor. Uh, but I was sober for a few years before. So um, it it, it, it is hard, you know, when you go through things that are hard, like divorce or you know, your life's stressful, um, you do want to revert back to drinking, but I always reflect back to look at all that I've done and look how far I've come, look how happy I am. And it stops me from wanting to. Um, and I just, I try to enjoy this other small things in life. I try to enjoy um, connecting with people without using alcohol. Um, I try to be present. I try to enjoy all the little things and that right there just keeps me happy. Yeah. It's an amazing story. Super inspirational. I hope someone is out there is listening and going to make the same decision because we really don't need an alcohol, you know, to make us happy and feel good. But sometimes for, you know, social reasons or for some, you know, for like a really hard situation in life, we feel that pressure that, you know, it's so easy to drink and we think we're going to feel better, but in the end of all of this, the alcoholic stuff in your body is anyways going to gone. And then you're going to feel worse because of the things yep. you've done and not dealing with the problems you have. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Now I want to move to the uh, app a little bit talking about the fitness. We are know that you switch your addiction to alcohol to addiction to fitness I guess because I think this is a really great uh, relaxer from stress as well so how the idea of you know getting really in fitness and make a career of this is came to your mind um it kind of came to me I had friends that noticed that I was in shape I had three children and they're like how do you do it you seem like you are confident and happy in your body. Um, they asked me to train them. Um, and this was in person and I did. And they just, I just kept having more and more people asking me. And, um, then the, um, the, everyone started coming out with online programs. And so that's when I decided, you know what, I should do it too. And I did. 
Um, and then it quickly went from a buy, one-time buy program online to a full app. And my, with my app, I just feel like I've had the most success because it's my own realm. It's super easy to navigate and it's really customized for my clients. I really focus on making custom programs, nutrition plans, um, and kind of introducing them to a vegan or a plant-based diet. I do not push it hard. I just introduce it to them. And sometimes they you know, are half plant-based and half not. And that's okay. It's their journey. But I like to show them the benefits for their health and for their physique and their body as a whole, why it can help them. Um, but I think a lot of my clients have had a lot of success and a lot of them stick with me for a long time because I just truly enjoy training and, and helping people get their confidence back, especially women. Wow. That's amazing. So how you actually build the app? Like it's hard. I know I do the same stuff and I know how hard is that technically to do. So did you have any help and how your app like working till you said it's super customized because there's a lot of apps out there. You just download and it's going to give you, you know, the workout plan and the nutrition plan is like full, like the same for everyone. So how your app is actually can customize things for people. That's when you really change your fitness goals and like your level of fitness is when you can get something that's customized to you because your goals and your body and the things that you need to change are way different than mine. So why would we have the same fitness plan? Um, maybe you want to gain muscle and lean out. Maybe I want to gain just my booty. You know, this is booty talks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I did have a developer develop the app for me. And every time I make a program, I customize it individually for that person, for that reason, because we're not going to have the same goals. We're not have the same body type. You need different set of calories and macros. And I do. Um, and I just take the guesswork out of all of it. You don't have to You go into the gym. You have no idea what to do. Um, you feel intimidated. I give you exactly what you need to do. And same thing with nutrition. You don't know the exact amount of foods you need to eat, the type of foods. Um, I kind of take all that guesswork out and I'm definitely known for my meal plans because people love my recipes. So I hear that a lot and I really enjoy kind of creating them. Wow. Okay. Amazing. So is anyone help you to build this like technical stuff and stuff like, Oh yeah. I didn't build my app myself. I had a developer kind of come up with it for me and we just worked together to figure out, look, you don't need a really complicated app. You just need something that works and is seamless. And that's what we came up with. You just need to be able to give the people their workout weekly um, a way for them to message you and for them to access their nutrition. You don't need, um, all these extra features that are just going to probably make the app slower or just kind of create confusion for the user. That's the biggest thing I didn't want to have. So only your clients can download your app or anyone in the fitness can just go, I don't know, on iPhones or maybe smartphone and find your app and download and use it. So you can download my app, but you won't have access to any programs. I, since I do most of my stuff customized, I have to set up a phone call with you and develop your, your um, specific workout and nutrition plan. And then you download the app, you sign mm. up, download. The app. So that's where I'm after. I did do a um, kind of a one size fits all a fitness program. And I enjoyed that, but I feel like I enjoy it and my clients get the most out of the customized programs so are really focused on that. So the best way to get started is to either message me on Instagram Facebook, um, or just head to my website and you can message me there too. Awesome. Okay, great. We're all going to leave this, you know, information in the description down below, how other people can find you. I want to know now a little more about your family and your kids. So how did you get these three beautiful boys? Because you're also <laughs> well known, um, like a, you know, fitness mom. So you really look incredible for having three kids. So when you was having your first boy and how you, you know, manage recovery time after you was pregnant? Um, I'm, I definitely like a challenge. I'll admit when I had my first kid, I did not listen. I went in the gym a week after I had him. I was, um, I was determined to not just, it wasn't just about getting my body back, but it was about getting a break. You know, we're moms. We need a break. The, the, the workouts were, um, time for me. It was me time. 
And I love the way it feels when I leave a workout. I feel more energized to be a better mom. Um, I feel like I got some time to myself and then my body also feels stronger. I feel more confident because I'm getting, I'm working on getting my body back. So with the first child, I was in the gym like a week after now it is kind of a humbling experience because you're not at the same level. You kind of have to lower your weights, go a little slower and listen to your body. You can't go full force back in where, where you were before you previously got um, pregnant. Same goes for pregnancy. When you're working out, if you're already working out, keep working out. You just have to listen to your body, take more breaks, lower the weight. Um, don't do abs because there's no point. <laughs> um, but don't, don't give up your fitness lifestyle just because you're pregnant. Um, just listen to a doctor, but also just keep moving. Um, so that, I think that's pretty much how I kind of bounced back with all three of my children. I just made sure I worked out throughout my pregnancy and that way I didn't have as much work to do. And also you want to be healthy. A lot of women end up getting gestational diabetes or, um, other dangerous kind of conditions when they're pregnant. Um, and they don't know how it's kind of a mystery a little bit, but the best way to combat that is to take care of yourself while you're pregnant, before you're pregnant and after you're a mom, you take care of your children, take care of yourself too. Yeah, exactly. That's for sure. But I want to ask you, is your pregnancy was plant-based? No, I've only been plant-based for two years. Mm, so okay. yeah, I, I like most people in America had grew up on a meat diet. I don't feel like we ate a ton of meat, but I, I definitely ate animal products growing up. It was, it was normal. Um, I made the decision to go plant-based two years ago because I started going through some digestive problems. And I also just started educating myself. I started reading books. I wanted to understand not just, um, because I knew that vegans wanted to help animals. They don't want to hurt and inflict pain on animals for un no unnecessary reason. But I didn't realize that you can truly get your all your protein from plants. Because that's one mm -hmm. thing that we worry about when we're in fitness. But the other side of it is environmental. It helps and it hurts the environment massively. That's probably the number one reason we should all be vegan. But mm -hmm. also, it's our health. It's not just about saving the animals in the planet. It's about your health. Almost every single major disease is caused by inflammation and, and from eating animal products. And I think that um, not enough people talk about that and we don't understand that. People just think that you get older, you're in your 50s, 60s, and you end up just getting a heart attack because you might have ate a little bit of unhealthy foods. But in reality, it's eating the, it's eating the animal products um, that don't kill you today but it kills you 20, 30 years from now. Yeah, I know about that. Exactly. So what did you push for you? Like what, like you was living your perfect, like fitness lifestyle, right? Eating animals. You said you, you start to struggle with some digestive issues. Like why you actually look into the plant-based diet? Um, I mean, as, as silly as it sounds like everyone else, I saw a few documentaries and they weren't based on um, how animals suffer, which is most documentaries are about. It was about the health. It, it explained that, you know, diabetes is not caused by eating too much sugar and too much carbs. It's actually caused by eating too much high saturated fats in your diet and your body cannot um, help, you know, regulate your insulin and your sugar levels. So that just really piqued my interest. And then I started, like I said, reading books and understanding that um, a major reason why people go vegetarian or vegan is because it does, you know, really exacerbate a lot of reasons why people develop these deadly diseases. Um, but, you know, my digestive issues, I, you know, like most people don't want to talk about, but you either have problems, either they have diarrhea, constipation, they have bloating issues, they have inflammation issues, they have um, food intolerances. And I felt like, I had done everything I could to help. I had a lot of bloating issues and you know what? I was ready just to try whatever I had to. So knowing that it was healthier and that it could possibly help my digestion issues, I just started doing it and I immediately felt better. Um, I wouldn't say it hundred percent cured my bloating because I have another reason why that happens. Um, but 
I just felt better. I didn't feel so swollen, inflamed. I don't know how to explain it. My energy, I already was an energetic person, but I felt like my energy levels got better. Um, and as small a person as I am, I actually did lose weight in a healthy way. Um, it's just hard to explain. You almost need to just try it yourself and, and just see how it makes you feel different. I didn't feel full and sluggish after my meals. I didn't feel like it took longer for me to digest foods. And honestly, I think people just overeat meat and they're not leaving room for the healthy fruits and vegetables and whole grains that actually keep you healthy and contain all the vitamins. So I just all in all just felt better and I just stuck to it. And now my whole family is vegan too. Wow. All your kids as well. Yeah. You know, theirs was a slow process because I didn't want to force them. I didn't want them to feel like they had to. But once, once again, I just educated them. I educated them on the reasons why um, not eating the animal products would help them. And they just slowly made their own decisions and they became more and more adventurous with eating their food because, you know, my kids still don't like beans. Like they won't eat them, but you know what? If they didn't like tofu. Now they love it. They love satan. You know, there's just all these different things to try. And you start to get excited about vegetables and fruits again, because There's just so many and it just feels good to eat healthy. And I'm so happy that they love doing it too. Wow. That's incredible. Like I would say that your switch to the plant-based diet is, wasn't necessary, but as most people, you are felt much better. Did you feel, or maybe did a blood work? Did you check with the doctor? Did you really improve your health? Do you know anything about that? If it's, if you actually check it. Um, so I did regularly see the doctor and, um, I already was really healthy. All of my levels were really good, but I did notice that my cholesterol level even got even better. They already were at a healthy level, but unfortunately, because Americans, most Americans have high cholesterol, the standard has been lowered and, um, standard cholesterol levels are actually higher than they should be. Um, so looking back at it now, I feel like they're even, even more so in a better level. And like I said, like just my own personal energy levels and how I feel is just so much better now. Yeah, I agree with you. And then so many people on my podcast say the same thing, more energy, more energy, and, you know, less inflammation and easier recovery, right? That's the basic thing that you're going to feel when you switch to the plant-based diet. So you were mentioned about proteins. Let me ask you this. What are your top five vegan plant-based proteins? Well, let me tell you, there's so many options and people don't realize that. Um, I have not gotten too much into lentils or legumes. I do eat beans, but it's more of like a carb source. Um, and because they have so many vitamins and fiber, but my favorite protein source is seitan. I make it at home. I make it in bulk. It's very easy to make. It's very affordable. Um, and it has the benefits of tons of fiber and really low calorie. And it's also really, really high in protein. And my kids love it. Um, you can eat it in any recipe. It's super seamless and there's millions of different ways to make it. Um, so that's my number one. Number two would be high protein, um, super firm tofu. That is not as versatile, but it's something that is very easy accessible. It's everywhere. You can find tofu in any country, in any supermarket. Um, and the super high protein is just more compacted. It has more uh, protein in it. It's also a low calorie option. Um, and I'd say those are my top two. I do supplement with a little bit of a protein shake if I'm on the go. And I like um, pea protein for that. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much. Can I ask you, because I do my homemade seitan too. I just want to know your recipe. So what do you put in your seitan? What do you use to make it? So my current favorite, because I kind of cycle out because, you know, we all get kind of sick of a taste. I use one can of beans. I usually get kidney beans or like a triple bean. Um, I use the vital wheat gluten and then I do nutritional yeast. I do a little bit of um, liquid smoke, a little bit of um, seasoning salt, poultry seasoning. And then I put, um, I think it's just, it's um, vegan vegetable broth or vegan ch chicken broth. So it gives that kind of like 
um, flavor in it. And then I, I boil pieces of it after I've mixed it and then I bake it. And if I really feel ambitious, then I'll actually actually bread it in, in like a kind of like a breadcrumb. And so mm -hmm. it makes like a chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I say, I do like four serving, you know, four huge servings at a time. And then I freeze them and then I just air fry them. So they're super crispy and stuff. Wow. I should check. I'll send recipe. you my recipe. Yes. <laughs> uh, cause I get excited. I never tried boiled my Satan and I actually never heard to add borscht, like chicken broth, you know, like me, uh -huh. like usually we all add water. Uh, yeah, I get like a concentrated powdered, um, like a chicken bouillon. Mm -hmm. It's obviously vegan. Um, it's, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. And then I actually boil it in that as well. So it just mm -hmm. creates all this flavor in it. Amazing idea. Yeah, I definitely want to try. So you send me the recipe. I'll also share it guys. So we all can try Ashley favorite Satan recipe. I think it's, I mean, it sounds <laughs> amazing though. Sounds really cool. Nice. So now I want to ask you a little bit more about your, uh, you know, like, like your career in fitness, but at the same time you have a career in modeling. So how did you actually become a fitness model and like why you decided to try it out? Um, it was a really good way to kind of get my brand out there and to get people aware of like my business, what I'm doing, what I offer. Um, it's really competitive kind of field. There's a lot of really successful and really strong women out there. Um, but I think that the biggest thing was I, I advocated for myself. I did not wait for people to reach out to me. I reached out to people. Um, and that's what it is. It's just networking. It's getting out there, you know, getting on podcasts, you know, talking to people, getting your name out there. Um, but I would go directly to the editors and um, email them and give them a pitch. Um, the best way to get into a magazine is um, to have connections, network, but also have an idea. Don't just say, I want to be in your magazine. Give them an idea. They need articles. They need nutrition um, pieces. They need editorials. Um, so it's not just about you. It's about offering something to them, offering something to their readers, um, because it's, it's not just about you being in the magazine and, and um, showing off or um, feeling good about yourself. It's about offering some real content to readers um, so that they want to hear more from you. Yeah. Wow. Love it. Love it. I think it's like in any business in life, it's a great example for anyone who listen us and you want to pursue any career, not only fitness or modeling, it's just show up and reach to people. Don't wait. Then someone is going to knock to your door and, you know, you know, introduce you the way you can grow. <laughs> I wish it's going to be right. We all wish for that, but you actually have yeah. to do your work, do your research and show up and then show the people what you can like um, show them, what you can tell them, what valuable information you can give them. And that's the best example. So you guys just really have to show up. I love this idea. I want to talk to you more, but we short on time. So I just going to move to my um, last questions, but I ask everyone on this podcast, if it's going to be the last day of your life on this earth, what are you going to do? Oh, definitely spend time with my family. Um, we'd probably travel somewhere, somewhere tropical. There's got to be a beach and, and just do something my kids want to do too, because it's, my whole life's about them. You know, like I can go do whatever I want whenever, but they're only little for so long. So it, it'd probably be something they want to do. And it would probably go into Disneyland or something <laughs> or going to the mall and shopping. But like, it would just be spending time with my family. That is literally the only thing and eat really, really yummy vegan food out oh. at a restaurant. Just spoil myself and my whole family. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It means you really love your family and care about them. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I want to also know if anyone out there who listen to us have a problem with not only losing weight and getting into fitness, because I know a lot of fitness coaches, I am fitness coach as well, but maybe someone that has a struggle like you was, right, with alcohol or any type of addiction, have you ever worked with those people or give advice or like, would you be open to talk to them? Absolutely. I think the hardest part is when you're in that low place and you're struggling, people don't, they're, 
they're embarrassed. They feel very embarrassed of what they're going through and they're ashamed. And I like to break that mold and tell people, you know, reach out, um, talk to me. I've been there. I, because of my struggle, I don't judge people. I understand that people go through hard things and they aren't who they are supposed to be. And I have actually talked to several followers or anyone who messages me and just help them through their hard time because sometimes they just need someone and it's sometimes a stranger is the easiest way, um, not someone closest to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just need someone to care. So yeah. absolutely message me. I'm always there for anybody. And um, just know that, you know, there is hope. And you can always make yourself a better person. You can always change your life and get away from anything like alcohol and addiction too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. I think it's just, just really important to have that type of support. And then they have a small game that they play with everyone in the end. So I'm just going to tell you two things and you should choose one, which you like. Okay. 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 Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> Black or purple? Black. Gym or outdoor workouts? I like gym. Beach or mountains? Beach. Juice or smoothie? Smoothie. Wine or water? Water. I know now. (laughs) Chocolate or sweet cream? Chocolate. Kiss or hug? A hug. Love or sex? Do I have to choose? <laughs> okay, I love it. No, you don't, right? Oh, you I'm can both. choose both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can take both. I love that. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. Before we're going to finish, I just want to ask if you want to share anything before you go with our listeners. And of course, tell everyone where they can find you the easiest way to reach to you if they're interested in coaching with you or just want to follow your fitness story. story. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I just want to say first off, thank you so much for having me and for anyone for listening. Um, if you guys ever need help with anything, nutrition, fitness, sobriety, um, you can reach me at, um, my Instagram It's Ashley King fitness. Um, you can message me right there directly. I will get back to you. I talk to anybody and everybody. If you ever want to see any different content, you can always message me there. Um, I have lots of recipes and workouts, Um, and I'm just here to help. So if you are looking for someone to help you kind of get confident again and a customized nutrition and workout plan, I can definitely help you. Amazing. Thank you so much for finding time and your really busy schedule with all your kids and, you know, fitness work. I appreciate this opportunity to talk to you. And I think it's amazing connection. I'll be happy to talk to you more about plant based diet and all those amazing recipes you do. But please don't forget to share your recipe with me. And you guys, yes, go ahead and follow Ashley. She really have an amazing content. That's why I decided to talk to you more in person and, you know, show up on the podcast thank you so much again and then guys we are here you soon bye bye bye